go, 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 go. Three more. What's up, everybody? So today I'm gonna show you guys how I conduct an intro session or someone's first workout that I never met before, ever. My first time meeting her. And it's different because it's not it's not in a textbook. There's no like list of things to go over that someone has pre-wrote for me to follow. So this is just something I've accumulated over the years of being a personal trainer where it has worked for me. There has been no injuries at all. And the clients, physiques and goals obviously speak for themselves. So this has been working for me and I'm just gonna share it with you guys so you guys could see or get an idea, like whatever niche that you guys have as a trainer, maybe something here could help you or you know contribute to your way of I guess first intro sessions. I've never worked for like an actual gym before, so I don't know what the standards are or how, like if there's procedures. I'm just coming from a point of view of a private personal trainer or what is it called? A, uh, what is it called when? Private contractor. Ah, mm. Coming from a private contractor perspective, we have to come up with our own way of doing business and our own way of like, I guess formulating whatever you know, steps of business we have to use when we do business with other people, like in this case, a client or a new person or another gym or whatever the case may be. So follow along and hope it helps and hope you get some tips out of this. Okay, so what's your name? Thelma uh, Ortigosa and it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, nice Alba. To meet you. Okay, so we're gonna train... Thelma. What, no, what are we gonna train? Hamstring and glutes. Hamstrings and glutes. Okay, so what do you usually do on a hamstring and glute day? Uh, definitely. Like the from the first exercise, second, third, all the way to the um, last. Definitely Romanian. That's what you do first? Yeah. Okay. Hip thrusts, sumo squats. Sumo squats with a dumbbell, barbell, switch. Dumbbell. With one dumbbell? Uh, yes, one heavy one. Okay. And then what else? So. Uh, course leg. What is it? Core leg. Like, like the, the, okay. Seated or lying? Uh, leg. Lying? Like this, that's pretty much. That's it? You don't Five do abduction? You don't, like, uh, yes. Yeah? At the end. At the end. At the end. Okay. And what are the main exercises that you see or you feel that contribute to your physique that you know that you will never take out of your program? Uh, hip thrust is one of my top exercises and then also reverse lunges. Okay. Just two exercises. Two exercises. Really and that you love, that you always... Yes. Okay. And the reverse lunges, where you where, where do you do them? On the slip machine, free weight, dumbbell? Dumbbells. Dumbbells? Yeah. Do you ever use a machine for them or no? Mm, just the Smith machine sometimes. Okay. But it's uh, hard for me to feel in the Smith machine. Yeah? Yes. Okay, all those things, I, I, I want to hear. I my quads instead of my <laughs> glutes <laughs> and my hamstring. And it's very hard for me to target my lower glutes and hips also. Okay. My hip is the, the most hard for me. Your hips or hip thrusts? My hip. like and the, the, side, the side. The side. It's yeah. hard for you to hit. Yeah. With anything, with seated abduction, you don't feel it? No? No, I feel more my upper glutes than my... Well, it's a t it correlates with the same area, so... But this is the stuff I want to hear, like the stuff like she, she, she feels her quads when she does reverse lunges on the Smith machine. That's what I want to hear. The fact that she doesn't feel her uh, adductors when she does a seated abduction, that's why I want to hear. Is there anything else that like you don't like? You need some sort of assist, like you would want, like the, I mean, you want to do this exercise, but you never felt it before, so you don't do it, like anything like that. Abduction or? is very hard for me to Abduction. feel how okay. I want it to feel. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to like find give my yeah. Find the, okay, so that is sub, so that's what we're gonna start with. So you see how me asking her questions and seeing what she's comfortable with, the exercises that she already does, I already have a foundation of the workout that I know where to go to. She's familiar with the exercises, 
I've heard her out, and now I have like a guide rail to go through the session instead of like, here, you're gonna do this and this and that, like giving her a new religion to, to go with. Because if I give her something that she doesn't like, and there's like a negative emotion going on there, and then I gotta teach her. But now the session's like taking up time because you only have an hour with them. So if she already knows the exercise, boom, you're already halfway there. So just use what they are comfortable with and what they're comp blah, 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 blah. what they're confident with because you want something that they're still doing that they're going to still continue to do even after they train with you. So we're going to start off with some sort of abduction and we're going to see if we could make her feel her abductors for the first time in her life. Then I try like different ways to do that to try to like this part of my muscle. So your glute doesn't go over here. It here. This is your quad. I mean this is your quad. Okay, so I always work out with this my upper okay. glute. So let me so you still want to feel this side part? Yes. Okay, so I do this and I hold myself here. Traction at 100%. Okay. okay. Now I want you to start decreasing the intensity of the contraction to 90%, to 80%, to 70, to 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and gradually go back to 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and repeat that again. contraction from here. One, and then control, go. There you go, two, go. Three, pause, four, so pause, don't use momentum, right there. Five. Pause, go. Seven, like that one, like that one. Up, nine, one more, up. Now, open and close, just open and close, go. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. I have you. Amazing. Did you feel the butt? The yes, side? definitely. You, yeah. you ready? So you yeah. felt the, the side of your butt? Yeah. That was easy. <laughs> So it could be a bunch of factors. It could be the fact that I could recline the chair for her, 
That's one. It could be the fact that I eliminated momentum that she was creating in the beginning, and I just try to make her use her glutes as much as possible without the momentum and the swinging stuff. It could be any of those things. So that was her warm-up set. Now we're gonna go into a working set. So she just pretty much learned, like on the spot, one, two, like four different intentions of doing a repetition. The first one that she was doing was a conscious way of doing a repetition. The second way was a confident one. I said, do it a little bit more confident. It was like smooth the way she was doing it. And the third one was aggressive. And then, it, no, we skipped aggressive and I said explosive. She got that perfectly where you pause and you explode with the contraction. You pause and explode. Once she get familiar with that, I was like, all right, just fucking open and close, open and close. And she obviously got that one. And then that was that. So now going into the working set, I could just say, all right, consciously give me five. And as she gets to five, I could be like explosive. She already knows what to do. If I say confidently, she already knows what to do because of this set. So that's how I program or structure the intro sessions with my clients. I don't really... That is how I push them, is with this stuff. And it's not even a lot of weight. It's just the way I'm teaching them and the way I'm taking away momentum and all that other outside variable stuff and just focusing on them using the muscle through the exercises that they already do. Stuff that they're confident and that they do on a regular basis during their own workout. So they're confident in doing the exercise and they already know what to do. So all I'm just doing is like tweaking little things and it changes like pretty much the perspective on training and doing the exercise. So now she knows what to do when she does hip abductions is she needs to maybe recline or just focus on her glutes a little bit more instead of using momentum. So you're always supposed to hold it. That's called bracing. You always want to brace like the entire body before doing an exercise. Because if you're not bracing and you have a weight over your shoulders, you can really like just fuck up the whole entire set and your spine in that one second. Go. Use your 
After picture in the beginning, I was like, take a picture before and then take a picture after. You ever seen those videos on TikTok? Yeah. It's just before I run my marathon, my name after. <laughs> and then after I run my marathon. <laughs> before training with Aldo and then after training with Aldo. Oh, say it. Do it. Do it right now. Say this is before training with Aldo. Or in the middle. <laughs> this is after. No, this is before. What a liar. This is. This is the, the same exercise. This is the first exercise. This is before. Mary, these two are the same exercise. Oh my god, I thought you, we finished already. <laughs> so she's been si sitting down. This whole entire workout. We haven't like, gotten up and done an exercise yet. How do you feel? Do you feel anything? I feel everything. Oh my gluten. I feel everything. <laughs> I think I'm building my gluten one day. <laughs> you what? I'm building my gluten one, one day. One day. Woo. 
that's good, that's good to hear. RDLs, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Easy stuff. <laughs> Easy stuff. <laughs> What do you use uh, for RDLs? Do you 